There, it wouldn't have been complete if she didn't knock the bucket over. Here, run him back in here. Run him back in here. Good job. Now shut the gate. Well, good morning. It's Bobby Lee here with Hurricane Creek Farms coming to you on a bit of a breezy but otherwise beautiful Sunday morning. We uh, out here getting uh, the yearlings, the stalkers, whatever we want to call them, um, checked on this morning. We have not been able to get a really good head count on them since we worked them. Um, we were down here real early yesterday because we had softball out of town and so we were when you're leaving at 6 a.m. and not home until 10 p.m. you have to do a lot of herd checks in the dark but we're gonna put a little feed out for them see if we can get them checked um, as you can probably guess looking at me um, did turkey hunt for just a few minutes this morning I mean it's just now 7 30 so we didn't hunt long but uh, just got too much else to do H had to had to cut it short did see a few hens um, heard one gobble um, but it was over on the neighbor's place so I'm Hey, that's typical. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can get after him again another day. But yeah, appreciate y'all watching. Um, y'all give the video a thumbs up, please, please. If you're not subscribed, that'd be real neat too. Um, let's get to it. Looks like a few of them are back there, that's fine. Now the tricky part, we'll see if we can get a head count on them. I counted 62 two times in a row, which leaves us a cool dozen short, but I can hear a few more still balling back there. So we'll ease that direction or sit here and wait a minute and see if 12 more show up. That would be nice while we give those a minute. Check on the mineral situation. Uh, still in pretty sh good shape. Um, obviously, we brought some some just feed out of in a bag and a bucket. Um, one because our feed bin is actually up at that end of the property. We might can see it if we walk over here, way on over there, and it's empty. So, uh, empty feed bin doesn't do us a whole lot of good anyway, right? Um, but they're actually supposed to be ringing us feed tomorrow, so it's one of the things on the to-do list. To get that move back home today. Um, so yeah, these calves are still just a little spooky. Some of them, young, settle down. All right, let's see if we can go put eyes on about 12 more. Well, we're up to five, and I see a few more over this way. Let's see if we can see them all. So, and with those three there, we have seen all but one, which number 32 came through the chute and got kind of hung her shoulder a little awkward the other night she didn't break it or anything like that um, but I knew the next day she was just a little lame nothing terrible so I've been kind of paying attention I have not seen her number again but I know she was in this pasture so my suspicion is She's just somewhere, just kind of not staying with the rest of the herd quite like she normally would. I would really like to put eyeballs on her though. It's a good looking bunch. I really like this group. Number 42 there, got her eye on me. She was the last one through the chute. And we of course tagged them in order. But um, yeah, apologize in that last video when we were um, yeah, I was doing my initial explanation of everything we were doing as we were working those calves. The, the audio, I guess my little fancy new microphone wasn't connected for some reason. But yeah, we, just to kind of go back on that, we vaccinated them all with the um, bovalus nasalgen um, 3 PMH, which is um, the intranasal respiratory vaccine. Um, they had, I can't remember what the name of the, the bovalus um, black leg vaccine. Uh, Clostridium. Therapies, a lot of people asked about that. Yes, we love the therapies. And now my low fuel alert came on. But therapies is 
maternal bovine appeasing substance. So it's a totally natural, or it's, a, or it's an analog of a totally naturally occurring pheromone um, that calms cattle. So any cattle that are stressed or you think are going to be stressed in the near future. Um, weaning, calves coming out of a sale barn, that's the two applications we've used it in. You're hearing of people using it in more and more situations. Costs less than $3 a dose. It actually costs even less than that um, because you can go to agzaga.com. They sponsor the Talk Dirt to Me podcast. Um, use the discount code Talk Dirt. It's all caps, all one word. Um, you can order the therapies. You can order the starter kit that includes, I think, two bottles of the product plus the, the applicator syringe. But and then all the other cool stuff they got. But Therapy is really good product. Um, we've been very happy with it. Um, there's no withdrawal for it. I mean, it's a pheromone. So, and at that price point for calves that cost us basically about $1,400 a head, it is well worth it. But anyway, I'm rambling. I gotta get home. Um, Kaylin and Kimber, one of the reasons I couldn't hunt long this morning, they are going on a quick trip out of town and back today. Actually, I believe they may be bringing back a surprise that uh, we'll be able to show you guys by the end of this video. Before we get out of the house and get started on any of our chores, I got a call from my dad. They've got a heifer that appears to be having a little trouble calving. So the wild man and I are, uh, have been called in for backup. Uh, we'll see if we can get this heifer caught, number one, and then uh, see what kind of situation we got. I think he said he could see at least one foot, which it's a pretty good sign. I mean, you know, two feet would be a real good sign, but um, yeah, we'll see. We got a tongue. I had it on her neck and I couldn't. She came right at me and You can let off on that one. I don't want to break her leg. There we go. It's a normal presentation. Must just be a big calf and her being small. We got both front feet and a head. There, it wouldn't have been complete if she didn't knock the bucket over. We about to get him, mama. There we go. We got it whipped now.
There we go. Got it. Yeah, it's a pretty big calf and a small heifer. Bad combination. All right, well. Well, that's a lot of placenta. Just a lot of uterine fluid. All right, I got some uterine boluses. That was the only one, Willis. <clears throat> All right. Um, back up, Willis. Smash my arm between her and the tree, Willis. All right. could have rode it, Willis. All right, so as expected, the calf was dead. It was a normal presentation, just a big calf um, and a small frame heifer. So um, other than the calf being dead, it went about as well as could be asked for. She, uh, she ran right off. Um, once we got the calf pulled, we put some uterine boluses in, um, just an antiseptic, uh, help avoid infection. And gave her also an um, injectable antibiotic and a little oxytocin. So she should be fine. We'll, we'll keep an eye on her, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, now I guess back to getting our regularly scheduled chores done. Went and grabbed that, that empty bin, brought it home. Our, our stationary bin that stays here at home is not quite empty, but really low. Uh, hope, normally both of them combined will hold right at six tons of feed, which is how much we have coming tomorrow. Eh, I'm hopeful that, that we got the bin space for it. If not, we may have to have them unload, pull that feed in some of those big plastic tubs. But anyway, um, that way we can have some feed right there conveniently with those calves at the road. So let's go check our cows here. There's a spider web, that's okay. Yeah, hopefully we will not find anything that needs to have a calf pulled, but it is not outside of the realm of possibility. But one calf pulled per video, uh, that's the goal. We've got a few of them waiting right here at the gate, wanting through, which of course, wouldn't you know it on the day where we decide, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let them back in this other pasture. They're not all piled up here like they were seemingly every other time we've been back here, but, uh, we had one more calf born, oh, today's Sunday. That was maybe Thursday, Thursday or Friday. We'll see if we can put highs on that newest one. Um, but boy, it is breezy. I'm sure y'all can probably tell. Hopefully the audio quality is not affected. Whoa, nearly face planted. That would have been funny. Made it for a good blooper right there in the mud. But uh, yeah. Good time to also point out ag gear. Um, of course, this is one of their long sleeve, kind of lightweight performance shirts. Um, nice to wear this one today because um, I got a little sunburnt yesterday at the softball field. Um, 
it was like 80. I think we're supposed to go up to 80 again today. And uh, yeah, protect you from the sun, also keeping you cool. Um, Hurricane is the discount code, 15% off. Check them out, use it. All right, we're gonna ride around here and uh, check on the rest of them. So there's the newest baby um, and mom doing good. I'm gonna ride over here. I saw two of the ones yet to cover over there. And 32.89 right there is one of the others. Uh, she's making a little bit of a bag, so. I'm... And then of course we got several others that have yet to cab but they're the ones that we don't really have a calving window defined on them because um, they came from those cows that we just acquired last fall but yeah things looking good out here nice day it's just if i could turn the wind down i don't know what the wind's blowing about 20 miles an hour turn it down to about half that speed it'd be a little nicer but yeah things looking good uh Oh, and I'd mentioned last time that, uh, you know, the podcast, I guess I mentioned the podcast earlier when talking about using that uh, discount code at agzaga.com if you're buying a pair of peas. Talk dirt, all caps, all one word for anything you order on Agzaga. But our guest this past week um, was actually the man who I'd first heard about fair peas from. Um, that is Mr. Corbett Wall. Um, he works for DV Auction, does a feeder flash every day, mon or Monday through Friday, five days a week. Um, and our cow there that is yet to calve is wanting to mount G31, which G31 is standing, so she is back in heat. Of course, that can be a secondary sign of heat when, when one's riding, so she tested bread. She better be bred, um, or otherwise she's gone if she ends up not calving. But yeah, Corbett was awesome, great guest. It was a really fun episode. Um, yeah, if you're a fan at all of his, um, or maybe you don't even know who he is, I encourage you to check out the podcast, Talk Dirt to Me, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Hey, man. Hey, Willis. W what were you telling me about how much bigger the sun is than the Earth? The sun has 6,000, the sun can fit 6,000 arms in it. Wow. Did you learn that fact at school? And then what were you saying about the butterflies? Um, the arms are supposed to be in Mexico right now. <laughs> I don't know. So they must be doing a lot of science lessons at school, which I love it. He was telling me, he's like, did you know that the, you can fit 6,000 Earths in the sun? And then we saw a bunch of butterflies. And um, he said, Why, shouldn't they still be in Mexico? I'm like, man, I don't know that either. <laughs> but um, yeah, what'd you say? Is science your favorite subject at school? So, hey, as a veterinarian, um, that warms my heart. But, uh, yeah. So what was your favorite thing that we've done today? Um, Did you like watching us rope that cow and pull that calf? Mm -hmm. You were the cameraman, weren't you? Yeah, he, he was the the man behind the camera so i hope we got some good footage um, a couple times i had to tell him like hey buddy point the camera up that sort of thing so i won't know until we get in there to edit but um yeah we're not done for the day either i think we're gonna get in the house and kind of relax for a little while um it is sunday after all our day of rest um or should be it's never we don't ever get a complete day off we're gonna try to kick back on the couch watch a little baseball this afternoon maybe catch a little short nap before we get back out here and attack it again. Hey, right, scoot over to the side so I can see. Over that way. Move over that, no, no, Willis, you move over there, there you go. Somehow it always settles and I have to jack it up a little more even though I pulled it out from under there just a day or two ago. All right. All right, tell me how far back to come.
Right there, good. Roll back a little bit when I put it in park. Yeah, let me pull forward just a bit. Yeah, it might go. Might have to pull up just a little more. It may go. Go open the gates for me. Shut that little gate going out to the pasture and open the two big gates. Here, run him back in here. Run him back in here. Good job. Now shut the gate. Good job. 45 pound, six year old kid. Intimidating. What? Probably nearly a one ton bull. Good job, buddy. Good job. All right, now we'll see if we can get backed up the rest of the way. I don't know where the bull came from. Normally they're not up here. We shut that gate there to shut him out of here, but apparently he was already in here lounging around. All right, so just like the last two Sunday evenings, Got the trailer backed up, ready to load out. The fat steers, or it's actually two steers and one heifer this time. Early tomorrow morning, so we can haul them to the processor. Be the last time. Third time and the last time. The last of our nine fat so will be headed to the processor. But, yep, get these gates secured. And then uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll run those three in here in the barn. That way I don't have to do it, you know, early in the morning in the dark. So these three are a little bit goofy. Those two right there, two steers were out of my dad's herd and just never have been handled quite as much as our cattle get handled. And then this heifer was, well, there's a reason she didn't get kept back as a replacement. <laughs> Cause we like those striped heifers for replacements. Y'all going in the barn. Going in there, going in there, going in there. No, 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 going in there, girl. Going in there, go on, go on. Go, go. All right. So we're gonna get out of here. They're a little bit stirred up. No sense in them staying stirred up. They've actually got enough feed left from this morning. So their last meal is already prepared. All right. So we were gonna try to turkey hunt this afternoon, but winds are blowing like 20 to 30 miles an hour, and that's not prohibitive for turkey hunting, but we also have t-ball practice. I kind of forgot that uh, we oftentimes try to do a Sunday practice. And last week we got three inches of rain, had both our games for the week rained out. So it is probably pretty important that we get the t-ballers some practice, because we play tomorrow night, but yeah, we'll get those loaded in the morning. Not in the video yet, because like I teased y'all earlier, Kaylin and Kimber are gone, and they're on their way home with a little surprise for the farm. Well, we're ending this video the same way we started, in camo after an unsuccessful turkey hunt. Pretty similar hunt to this morning. Had hens right in our laps, but, but no gobblers. But our big surprise. What's the big surprise, Kimber? We got a new horse. She is a tall girl. Yes. An off the track thoroughbred, right? Off the track thoroughbred. Well. She is five years old. Uh, she's five eating. You might five eat years old. She is tall. Pedro did this to me. Pretty and long legged. Pedro did this to me. Oh, I'm talking about you or the horse. I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> Dad jokes. Dad jokes to go around. But, um, yeah, I don't think she really has a name yet. She has a registered name we haven't come up with. 
barn name. Right yeah. now, it's, they've been calling her Poppy, but. Yeah, that they were, the barn she was at there called her Poppy, but that's what the kids call my dad, so, um, who you saw earlier in this video. But, yeah, it's been a fun weekend. Um, I'm sure you're exhausted because we've gone pretty hard. Um, we were gone up from about 6 a.m. yesterday to about 10 o'clock last night for softball tournament, and Kaylin left about 8 o'clock this morning, and yeah, got home about 6.30 tonight, so. But anyway, we uh, had a lot going on in this video. That um, Getting that calf pulled from that heifer was obviously uh, yeah. something we didn't expect to have to do, but um, yeah, somebody had asked like a month or two ago, I think they were new on the channel, they said, I like this channel, but why don't they ever pull any calves? Well, it's because we don't have to. We don't ever want to have to, but I guess they got their wish. That is the first one in several years, but um, yeah, glad to help my dad out. Um, and I was thinking, like, what question are we going to get on that? You know, why didn't we get her in a chute? So she was on the back part of their place a long way, um, probably close to a mile from where she was to their catch pens. Um, we're pretty confident we could get a loop around her neck. We did. Actually, I caught the foot first, but it worked. Um, adapt, improvise, and overcome. But um calf was dead as they usually are when you have to pull them and that that is sad um but she looked to be in pretty good shape so we'll see um i'll um i'll be checking back with with him and he'll be keeping us updated on her but i expect her to be just fine um but anyway i'm rambling on at the end we actually just had a good beef dinner had a um, beef pot roast with potatoes and carrots um actually grabbed some more beef out of my dad's freezer just because they got more freezer space than we do because we're gonna be getting half of um, one of those three that's going tomorrow. But that means it'll be about three weeks before we have that beef back. But anyway, rambling on. That's the end of the video. What do y'all tell everyone? Beep, 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 beep. See y'all next time.